Do you know how birds raise their cheeks by eating them right out of the nest? Welcome to Sable. Developed by Shedworks and published by Raw Fury, Sable is a somewhat recent entry in a long list of games driven by the motto, if you can see it, you can go there. I love this philosophy, and while I wouldn't want it in all of my games, in exploration-based ones at least, it never fails to elevate the experience, and Sable is no different, as it takes ideas from other games in the same genre to try and create the smoothest possible experience. It doesn't fully succeed in every aspect, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. What will probably catch your attention first is the game's visuals, which are absolutely striking. Even if they're not your cup of tea, you won't be mistaking Sable for anything else, as it clearly paves its own way amongst games that take pride in their unique presentation. With exploration at its core, Sable will see you follow the story of the namesake character as she goes through the gliding, a lonely journey of self-discovery where you and your bike travel the world searching for what your goal in life should be. This overarching theme is extremely cohesive throughout, which includes the world setting. If you pay attention to the background footage, you'll notice a constant backdrop of wounds, skeletons and other decayed elements, but these aren't ever treated with the negative connotation of abandonment and sadness, but as emphasis on detachment and growth in a world pervaded by nomads that give the world time and space to breathe and move along and find its path, just as they do themselves. On a personal level, this path is ultimately represented by a mask which you'll choose at the end of the game and is acquired by performing feats of skill pertaining to different callings. The overall story and dialogue are centered around the same message with genuinely moving narrative moments that pack some unexpected punch. Regarding gameplay, the game is divided into exploration, platforming and puzzles. Your moveset and abilities won't ever change at all, which means all of the variety comes from the levels themselves, and there's actually more to it than it meets the eye. Puzzles are definitely the weak link, but they don't really overstay their welcome, and they revolve around activating different switches by moving limited power cores around. Platforming, on the other hand, is a welcome surprise, with different flavors from clearly signposted paths in earlier dungeons to more involved sections where you're scouring the terrain, finding the best way to progress in later ones. Exploration is confined mostly to the overworld and also has a couple tricks up its sleeves. The world of Sable is relatively sparse. Unlike other exploration-first games where the map is densely packed with distractions under every rock, here you'll find mostly vast expanses of scenery interspersed with clearly marked interest points. This can be either an up or a downside, and in my particular case it ends up being beneficial, as a very high density of activities and landmarks turn out frustrating more than amusing, as I feel like I can't ever get anything done since I'm very easily distracted. The different zones feel distinct in multiple ways. The most obvious will be the way the visuals completely transform from biome to biome, but even mechanically it feels very different to explore the flat desert where your bike is your best friend with a clear-cut path towards points of interest, to towering canyons pervoited by humblingly large skeletons, peppered along the way by crafty engineers trying to join the multiple mountain tops and where you're constantly on the lookout for precarious safe spots to rest in between climbing. This is seamlessly married to the quests you'll be given, which are mechanically very simple, as is the entire game, and exist both to further expose you to the world and its inhabitants, as well as a way to nudge you into the wild and off the beaten path. Some are there to get your feet wet on the current zone, while others will send you way off into unexplored territory, where you'll then find new quests to continue this cycle. As you go from one place to the next, landmarks in the distance will surely grab your attention, which will usually lead to some additional side content. Your rewards for thoroughly exploring the world range from optional lore, to goes very deep at times, cosmetics, or even just a contemplative vista. In terms of longevity, you can be done with it in around 7 hours, and that's taking a very leisurely pace. As for me, I did every quest and collected every mask except one and finished it in 18 hours. 
The one mask I left behind would have involved getting 100 hidden collectibles scattered throughout the world, of which I got 80. To get the remaining ones, it would involve me scrubbing my face against every nook and cranny of locations I already visited, which is the kind of activity that really annoys me and brings me no pleasure whatsoever. From what I read, completing this extra quest would put the total playtime at 20 something hours. Sadly, Sable isn't just sunshine and rainbows. The game is clearly unpolished, bordered on rushed out. The list of issues and annoyances is quite substantial, from small stuff like tutorial messages vanishing in an instant, to game-breaking issues that can potentially halt your progress. When I first got my bike I was told to whistle without any context. Turns out the whistle calls out your bike, but in my case it just got it stuck inside some boxes somehow. In another instance very early on, every interaction prompt just stopped appearing, so I had no way of knowing what to interact with or who I could talk to. This prevented me from progressing the main story until I rebooted the game. And even in technical terms, the game is not great. I don't know if there's anything wrong with my setup or what, but the game was constantly chugging and stuttering, popping was horrendous, the sound was cutting off, it was pretty miserable at times. It's a shame as you're constantly getting pulled out of your otherwise cathartic experience just to deal with some UI annoyance or whatever. As for gameplay criticism, I also have some. Some quests aren't designed the best for one reason or another, like too time consuming for example. In one occasion I needed to wait for the sun to rise while I was standing on a particular spot. Given I reached set spot right at sundown and there's no easy way to move time along, this amounted to a huge amount of real time of just twiddling my thumbs. I also felt the lack of overarching, worldwide secret secrets. There are some global quests, but those are bombastically telegraphed in the overworld and kinda self-solve themselves without much thought required. Otherwise, everything you need to do is self-contained to a specific location, so there's not any aha moments as you discover in one corner of the world the way to open that super mystical door that's in a completely different one. It is also disappointing that there's no voice acting, but honestly I don't blame the developers at all, as that's a massive endeavor and the dialogue itself conveys a wide array of emotions and character dispositions, which not every game can pull off. If you can get past these issues, I'd definitely recommend Sable. It is a contemplative, blissful experience with no combat, no skills, no high octane anything. It is truly peaceful and by the end of it I felt really connected to the world and was genuinely sad to let the game go. Which is extremely on brand with the whole narrative and thinking about it turns the whole thing into quite the matter experience. And that's enough for me. I'd like to close out with a sentence of in-game dialogue that resonated with me more than it was probably meant to and sums up both the game itself as well as what it's like to play it better than my ramblings. My advice, try to have fun. There's a lot to be said about ritual and independence and all of that out there but the world's an easier place if you put joy first. See ya!